Let's pray. Father God, we just thank you and praise you for this day. Father, we thank you for your word. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to share your word with your people. Father, we lift this message up to you right now in the name of Jesus. We pray that it will not return void, but will accomplish what it was sent to do. Father, I ask that you put a watch over my tongue and nothing that's not to the upbuilding of your kingdom comes out of my mouth. In Jesus' most precious name, amen. <clears throat> so, um, not, not appropriate joke, but it's, it's funny. Maybe uh, y'all can laugh and make me feel better. So Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs visited the Vatican, and at a weird turn of events, they actually got a chance to talk to the Pope. And when they were talking to the Pope, Doc, one of the dwarfs, walked up to the Pope and said, uh, Your Royal Majesty, or whatever they call you, um, are there any dwarf nuns? And he said, Well, no, there's none in the Vatican, son. He was like, No, no, no. I mean, in all of the religion, are there any dwarf little people nuns? And the Pope thought for a second, and he said, Well, I'm kind of the boss around here. But no, we don't have any dwarf nuns. And by that time, all of the dwarves started laughing, and they started pointing and said, Dopey dated a penguin. Dopey dated a penguin. <laughs> Maybe I'm dopey. There we go. It's the best I got. Look, I'm taking all of the things we can take. <clears throat> um... Crystal thought that was funny, which is usually a good idea that it's not funny <laughs> as a whole. All right, so what we're going to talk about today is Christmas. Um, this is my, I think I did it one time before when Granddaddy didn't feel well and five times since I've been the pastor. So this is my seventh Christmas, I think. But anyway, so every year when we break it down Christmas, I try to look at a different aspect of what took place. Last year we talked about the star and what it meant and the prophecies that were fulfilled with the star. And this year we will talk about the announcements. You know, um, God in the Old Testament had basically used his, um, his prophets and he had talked to his people and he had led his people through all kinds of things, right, in and out of, of different uh, captivities and in different lands and across the Jordan and all the places, right? But in that time frame, God predominantly used uh, prophets to speak to his people, right? And then at Malachi, it stopped. And there was a silent period, <clears throat> right, that silent night. It was a silent period for somewhere around 430 years that God didn't speak to anybody, anywhere, anyhow. Or at least that there's no record of anyway. During this time frame, the Israelites had been under some, a couple of different um, groups of people, the Persians and, then, and the Maccabees and then the Romans, right? And so the Romans had taken them over about 65 years before the birth of Christ, right? But they had been under this reign. But it, during that time, God had not spoken really to anybody anywhere at all. And then he broke his silence. And he broke his silence with a series of visits by angels. You know, there's not, <clears throat> we think about, yeah, the, the angels appeared. But if you look at the history of the Bible, there are not a lot of times that angels visited people. I mean, Jacob at the ladder and they wrestled with the angel. But for the most part, angels didn't show up. So here is a pretty unique situation to where the angel showed up. And not only did they show up, man, they showed up. I mean, they was talking to everybody, cousins and brothers and everybody. And so we're going to talk about all of the interactions that took place. And what's amazing is here's 430 years of quiet, right? And then when the angels show up, all of a sudden God's word's being spoke and the Holy Spirit shows up. And so we see some Prophecies being fulfilled, obviously, but we also see some prophecies being made in this group, right? So we're going to talk about the Christian, I mean, the Christmas story as a whole, but we're going to go person to person to person and who interacted with who and what they said, okay? And like I said, it's just a different way to look at Christmas, and it's, it's an important aspect of what took place. <clears throat> and, you know, it, it's, it's funny how the Gospels all focus on something different, right? But... All of them have their own place. So if you will start with me with the gospel according to Luke, um, chapter 1. Right? We all know Luke 2 is like the whole, 
you know, <clears throat> what Mr. Bobby reads so eloquently. I wish I could like hit a button and then Mr. Bobby read it so eloquently and then I could go back to preaching and then hit a button and Mr. Bobby, you know, or like James Earl Jones or somebody that sounds real good reading, not me. So Luke 1, 5, and <clears throat> the, the, the title in my Bible right above it, it says, the angel promises the birth of John to Zechariah. So in verse 5 it says, in the time of Herod the king of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah who belonged to the priestly division and his wife, Elizabeth, was also a descendant of Aaron. And both of the, them were righteous in the sight of God, observing all of the Lord's command and decrees blamelessly. But they were childish because M. Elizabeth was not able to conceive, and they were very old. Right? Once Zechariah's division was on duty, he was <clears throat> serving as a priest before God. So what they did was is they went in. Like when it was your turn to serve, you, you, you left home, went, prayed up. They did sacrifices over you, and you served your time away to do what God's, you know, people thought they were supposed to be doing, right? What the Jewish traditions were. So he was away serving, right? <clears throat> he was serving as a priest before God. He was chosen by lot according to the custom of the priesthood to go into the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And when the time for burning of incense came, all the assembled worshipers were praying outside. Verse 11, And then the angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing at his right side of the altar of incense. And when Zacharias saw him, he was startled and gripped with fear. No kidding. I'm the only dude in the whole inside of the building, and I'm praying and doing my stuff and lighting this incense, and then all of a sudden there's a dude standing there. And where did he come from? I think the kids would say now, because of the gaming thing, he spawned, right? He just appeared right there. See, he appeared at the side of the altar, and, and he was startled. And it's those famous four words uttered by almost every group of angels ever, right? Do not be afraid. There you go. Thanks. I'll remember that. Do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear a son, and you will call him John, and he will be a joy and a delight to you, and he will <clears throat> and many will rejoice because of his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord, for he is never to take wine or any fermented drink, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before he is born. <clears throat> he will bring back many of the people of Israel to the Lord of their God, and he will go on <clears throat> before the Lord in spirit and in power of Elijah, and he will turn the hearts of the parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of righteousness and make ready the people and prepare for the Lord. Pretty good news. Somebody told me, hey, man, your kid's going to be born, and they're going to do all of these wonderful things for God. Yes, sign me up twice. <sighs> Zechariah did not have so much. What did he say? Zechariah asked the angel, how can I be sure of this? Dude, I'm an angel of God. I just appeared here to tell you this. What are you doubting? I am an old man and my wife is well along in years. And the angel said to him, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God. I have been sent to speak to you and tell you this good news, and now you will be silent and not able to speak. Why? Because we know that what our words, what we believe in our heart and say with our mouth, we're going to have, right? We know that we have that prophetic ability to tell our future to where we are when it lines up to God's word. And if Zechariah would have been allowed to play down, debilitate, talk trash about, be negative about, who knows what would have taken place. But the angel Gabriel said, no, 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 no. And now you'll be silent, not able to speak until this day happens because you do not believe my words, which will come true, not maybe, not might, at their appointed time, right? It's still on a time frame with God. <clears throat> Meanwhile, the people were waiting on Zechariah, wondering why he stayed so long in the temple. And when he came out, he could not speak. And they realized he had seen a vision, and they kept asking him to make signs, but he was not able to speak. So, first guy to show up, the first angel to show up, is talking to Zechariah, talking about John. Why? Why is John important? Because John 
was supposed to go into the desert and come back out and be the trumpet of Christ. He was supposed to be the, the herald of what is to come, right? Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. The Lamb of God is right on my coattails. You better get right before he gets here. That, that's John's job, right? So did y'all, well, we'll come back to it. All right, so that, that's, that's number one, right? Zechariah, seen an angel, first time God spoke to anybody, 430 years. All right, you skip down a couple verses if you're riding with me. Um, to the 26th verse, in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent an angel to Gabriel to Nazareth in the town of Galilee to a virgin pledged to marry a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored, the Lord is with you. And Mary was greatly troubled with his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, do not be afraid, right? It's a standard angel greeting. Like if an angel ever comes to me and does not say, do not be afraid, I'm like, bro, you're not real. You, you have to say, do not be afraid. <clears throat> do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God, and you will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will call him Jesus, and he will be great, and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever, and his kingdom will never end. And Mary did not say, this can't be possible. She just said, how will this be, since I am a virgin? A legitimate question, right? Like, like, I know how this works, and I've missed a step here. I can't be pregnant. And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you, and the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. And even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child at her old age. <clears throat> and she who was said was unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. Mary answered, I am the Lord's servant. May your word be fulfilled. And then the angel left her, right? Much better answer than Zechariah saying this is impossible. I'd hate to believe that Mary had to be silent for nine months before she got pregnant. That would have been pretty tough. <clears throat> May your word be fulfilled in me. So we went from God not talking to us at all to within six months now, right? Or six and a half, seven months that Elizabeth comes, uh, uh, Zachariah sees the angel and Elizabeth becomes pregnant. And now she's six months pregnant and the angel shows up to Mary and says, you're going to be pregnant. So Mary's like, hey, this is pretty cool. Wonder how Joseph felt. Well, thank goodness that the angels didn't leave him out. Um, but it's not in Luke. So if you go to the gospel according to Matthew, <clears throat> In the first chapter, <clears throat> in the 18th verse. So this is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law, can't divorce her, don't want to divorce her, and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace. Because what happens if Joseph says, I haven't slept with her and she's pregnant? Well, then we stone in her, right, because she's an adulteress. We go back to Jesus drawing in the dirt later. Right? But he, he, he's a man of character. I don't want to put her in that situation. I don't want to publicly put her in that situation. And he had in mind to divorce her quietly. Like, I ain't going to make a big deal out of it. We ain't going to be on Judge Judy. But, I mean, obviously somebody's not telling me the whole truth here. <clears throat> and after he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Now, there, there's a difference. The angel that appeared to Zechariah was in, I can't say in person, in, in, in reality. They were awake and they were standing there. The angel that appeared to Mary was in reality and he was standing there. The, the angel that appeared to Joseph was in a dream. And, and <clears throat> so in the dream, 
And that had happened sometimes, right? Right? Some other people have had dreams with angels. <clears throat> Appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary. He still said, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit, and she will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. And all this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet, that they, the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God's with us. And when Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him to do, and he took Mary home as his wife, but he did not consummate the marriage until she gave birth to the son. Ah, oh, yes, because she gave birth as a virgin. So he did not consummate the marriage until after the angels show up and the shepherds show up and we run walked all the way to Bethlehem and back and it, none of that. Right, we married, but we ain't. Okay? <clears throat> uh, and gave him the name Jesus. All right, so now, back to Luke. Now, I said this was about the, the angels and then some about it, the Holy Spirit stuff too, right? So, um, back to Luke, uh, chapter 1, verse 39. And we're just going through the whole story, right? We're talking about all the supernatural things happening. And at, the time, at that time, Mary, so Mary got ready and hurried out of, to a town in the hill, country of Judea, and where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. <clears throat> this is a tough part for me to read. And when Elizabeth <clears throat> heard Mary's greeting, the baby leapt in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit, and in a loud voice she acclaimed, <clears throat> exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. Why am I so favored that the mother of our Lord should come to me? <clears throat> as soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leapt for joy. Blessed is she who believed that the Lord fulfilled his promise. Right. <clears throat> so, couple things happen here, right? Number one, when the angel was talking to Zechariah, he told Zechariah that this baby would be filled with the Holy Spirit even in the womb, right? Not like after he's born or once he becomes of age, that that baby will be filled with the Holy Spirit in, in the womb, right? <clears throat> and when Elizabeth heard Mary's voice, <clears throat> she was filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, previous to the New Testament, everybody that had any kind of interaction with the Holy Spirit, it said that the Spirit came on to them. Right? When, uh, when Elijah was going to outrun the the, the chariots and the horses, and he tucked up his garment, and it says the Spirit came on to him, and he outrun the horses and chariots to the gates of Jezreel, right? It came on to him. But here, it talks about being filled with the Holy Spirit, right? The, the new covenant is already starting to develop its parts when Jesus was just conceived, just conceived, not, not, not that when he was born and died on the cross and redeemed us, it, when, when the God's flesh was on the planet, the Holy Spirit started filling people. And Mary was filled, um, Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. And what she said is profound. How did she know that? You think Mary had a gender reveal party? You think they were discussing she was pregnant? She wasn't even married yet at this time. If you read Luke chronologically, this was right about the time Joseph was thinking about divorcing her. Nobody knew, but the Holy Spirit knew, and he announced through Elizabeth, announced not only, you know that, it's us and one more, and we get the little picture and we send it on the internet. We didn't announce that she announced not only are you pregnant, but you're pregnant with the Lord of lords and king of kings. You're pregnant with the savior of the world. <clears throat> and she told her little cousin, how am I so favored that you came to my house? 
Y'all ever done that to a little cousin? Like they showed up and you go, how am I so favored that you came to my house? And a big cousin, little cousin, aunt, uncle, brother. Yeah, not, probably not so much, right? But all of a sudden, everything started to make sense. And out of this time of quiet that it lasted so long, right? You, you think, I mean, it, you think it's, well, I had a dry spell. Uh, you know, I haven't done a lot and, and my prayer life hadn't been that real good and I had a dry spell and I really hadn't had a lot of communication with God for, for you know, weeks or months or, or maybe even a year or two. No, no, no. 430 years. Generations. Like, anybody in here know anybody that they was kin to 430 years ago? I mean, some of y'all might have did that 23 and me plus six and did the, all the stuff. But 400 years ago, 400 years God had been quiet. And all of a sudden, the greatest announcement ever started taking place. And when it did, holy moly, and when it did, all of a sudden, the angels showed up and people were being filled with the Holy Spirit and people were prophesying. I mean, that's a prophecy, right? What, what Elizabeth just shouted out in a loud voice, that's a prophecy. That she didn't, that's not something she knew. <clears throat> All right, I got to get to it. So Luke, we stay in Luke 59. <clears throat> Anybody think it's amazing that uh, Zachariah's still been quiet for this whole time? That's pretty tough. Uh, look here. I, I'm going to have to agree with the angel because I don't know if I can put up with the you know, whole pregnancy plus a little bit to be quiet. That would be tough on me, me, me personally. So <clears throat> 57, really. And when it was time for Elizabeth to have her baby, she gave birth to a son. And her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown great mercy, and they shared her joy. <clears throat> and on the eighth day they came to circumcise the child, and they were going to give him the name of his father, Zechariah. Because, um, you know, the girls didn't get to, like, say a whole bunch in that time frame, right? The father kind of named this kid, right? Remember we told Joseph that his name was Jesus, yeah, but, and, and we told Zechariah that his name was John. Um, so anyway, the mother spoke up and said, no, he is to be called John. And they just said to her, no one among your relatives has that name. And they made signs to his father to find out what his name, what he would like to name the child. And he asked for a writing tablet, and in everyone's astonishment, he wrote, his name is John. And immediately his mouth was open and his tongue was free, and he began to speak and praise God. <clears throat> and all the neighbors were filled in awe throughout the hill, praising God. <clears throat> and throughout the country of Judea, people were talking about these things, and everyone who heard wondered about it, asking, what then is this child going to be for, this, for the Lord's hand was with him? All right. <clears throat> Maybe I can read this one. And his father, Zechariah, was filled with the Holy Spirit. Again, here again, another opportunity where something changed. And it prophesied, Praise be the Lord God of Israel, because he has come to his people and redeemed them. For he has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. And it is said through his prophets long ago, salvation from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us to show us mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant, the oath he swore to our father Abraham to rescue us from the hands of our enemy, to enable us to serve without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all of our days. And you, my child, will be called the prophet of the Most High. <clears throat> And you will go before the Lord and prepare him a way to give his people knowledge of the salvation through the forgiveness of their sins because of the tender mercy of our God, <clears throat> by which the rising sun will come to us from heaven to shine on those living in darkness and in the shadow of death to, the guide, to guide our feet in the path of peace. Pretty amazing, right? From a guy who just a few months ago said this is impossible, all of a sudden, right, he, his tune has changed. And the Holy Spirit filled him and gave him this information. And here again, 430 years of quiet, and we had all of the old prophecies. 
But right here recently, this man and woman, Elizabeth and Zechariah, both prophesied the birth of Christ. Neither one knew both prophesied the birth of Christ for the people around him to understand what was getting ready to happen. I mean, could you imagine being there and this guy starts prophesying and talking about how salvation has come? And, and I mean, the Jews have been spending years and years and years waiting on the Messiah to show up. They had been under different rulers and under the heel of different people. They had been held down. They had been in captivity. Even now, during this time frame, they are under Roman rule, and they were not allowed to worship how they wanted to really. They were kind of squished down into this. And here this guy is prophesying that, that salvation has come. What I can't get over What I can't get over are the people that were there who saw the prophecy happen, who heard it with their own ears. How could they not immediately fall on their face and worship God? How could they not understand <clears throat> that the Messiah was right there, ready to come? And yet they still didn't. They still turned their back on him. The Jewish people still would not receive Jesus as a Savior. They had all of these things, right? <clears throat> and I'm out of time. We're we going to read the last one. Or there's still two more. Uh, so 2.8, right? Where else did the angels go? This is the favorite part of everybody's favorite part of the play, right? 2.8. And there were shepherds living out in the field, keeping watch over their flocks. And the angel of the Lord appeared to them, and glory shone all around them, and they were terrified. And the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. For today in the town of David, a Savior has been born, and he is the Messiah, the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. And you will find the babe wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those whom his favor rest, right? That's not the traditional one. So if you look at it, right? God spoke to people in the New Testament and the Old Testament. And actual angels appeared to, that we have a record of, Jacob, he wrestled him, Zechariah, Mary, and the shepherds. The people who dreamed or had visions of angels were Jacob, different Jacob, Joseph, a baker, a cupbearer, Pharaoh, Isaiah, this Joseph, and the Magi. And I'm not going to get to that today. But later on in the story, right, once Jesus is born and Herod has decided that he's going to kill all of the babies, God steps in again and gives a dream to the Magi to not go back and report to Herod to what they have seen. And in the same time frame, the same time frame, like verse 12 and then verse 13, he sends another angel in a dream to Joseph to say, hey, look, it's not safe here anymore. I need you to take the baby and escape to Egypt. All of those things led up to all of the prophecies being fulfilled, right? Prophecy after prophecy after prophecy. 430 years, nothing. Within a two and a half year plight right here, angels filled with the Holy Spirit, prophecies, more prophecies, people coming from far off from seeing the star. Everything points to the birth of Christ. In fact, our, our calendar really starts right here, right? Right here. But don't worry, it's just a fable they tell in church, right? It changed the entire world. It changed the entire world. 430 years of quiet erupted by angels and visions and dreams and prophecies and the Holy Spirit filling them. And just like that, the Messiah was born. And praise God he was, right? Who makes the story a whole lot better when you know the end, right? <clears throat> All right, let's pray. Father, we just thank you and praise you for your word. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to celebrate the birth of Christ. Father, we thank you that we have been redeemed and set free and saved, and we give you the praise and honor and glory for it. In Jesus' most precious name, amen.